Understanding and accommodating the 12 learning styles, a new way to empower the learning needs of all students by Dr. Erica Warren. Hi, I'm Dr. Erica Warren. I just wanted to assure you that the 12 ways of learning is based on an extensive literature review in the areas of learning styles, cognitive styles, Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences, and it also considers an information processing model out of school psychology. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I look forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks so much. I have a message for all learners. First, each learner processes reality in their own unique ways. Second, if you educate others about your best ways of learning, they will understand you better. Third, there are no right or wrong ways to learn. Your way is the right way for you. And fourth, learning about and accommodating all 12 learning styles will make you a more patient and understanding person. First, there are visual learners. Visual learners acquire information through observation. They like to see visual stimuli. There are two types of visual learners. Some have a strong mind's eye and can visualize readings, ideas, and images. They may even be able to create a movie of images in their head. Others may not have a strong mind's eye, but their recognition of visual content is excellent. For many visual learners, the following adage has great significance. A picture is worth a thousand words. Albert Einstein was a visual learner. He once said, if I can't picture it, I can't understand it. Many students struggle with memorizing Spanish vocabulary. In Spanish, ojo means eye. A good visual way to memorize the meaning is to make the letters of the word into a face with big eyes. Second, there are auditory learners. Auditory learners understand information through listening. Auditory learners also gather knowledge from talk, radio, lectures, and speeches. Some auditory learners just need to listen in class. Taking notes can distract them from understanding and remembering the content. Text-to-speech actually comes on some computers and it is a great way for auditory learners to edit their work. Third, we have tactile learners. Tactile learners like to touch objects or manipulate things. Some tactile learners like what I call hand gum. They can concentrate better when doodling or manipulating something tactile in their hands, such as a squishy ball or putty. The other type of tactile learner finds that the fine motor act of writing down information helps to encode lessons. Tactile learners often like to touch the things that they are learning about, and some love stress toys. Encoding for tactile learners can be greatly enhanced when they are presented with manipulatives. These learners often love to create dioramas and work with wiki sticks, silly foam, marbles, balls, and in this case, clay. Rolling clay into worms and forming shapes can be a great way for students to learn the alphabet. Fourth, we have kinesthetic learners. Kinesthetic learners need to move their bodies. Movement actually helps them to attend. Telling a kinesthetic learner to sit still can turn off their brains because movement actually stimulates cognition. If a student is very active and moves around a lot, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are a kinesthetic learner. Movement must aid in the learning process and not distract the learner. Some schools are now giving students the option to stand at their desks. Some desks even provide a foot swing for the kinesthetic learners. I really enjoy my kinesthetic learners. By adding movement, a lesson can quickly become fun and memorable. Fifth, we have sequential learners. Sequential learners like information presented in a specific order or sequence. These learners often like to organize their files alphabetically. Breaking large assignments into manageable steps can be very helpful for the sequential learner. Many sequential learners enjoy timelines because it places information into an ordered context. Six, we have simultaneous learners. Simultaneous learners need to relate and connect information. Creating mind maps or diagrams can help simultaneous learners to conceptualize the big picture or the main idea. 
Simultaneous learners also like to organize materials by commonalities or under headings. Simultaneous learners often need to make connections, so mind maps can be drawn by hand as in this image. This diagram depicts the 12 ways of learning. If students find that creating mind maps by hand is too time consuming, they can always use software tools such as Inspiration to assist with the process. Seventh, we have reflective learners. The reflective learner needs to think about or analyze material. They spend a lot of time planning and reprocessing information. When a reflective learner says that they need to think about it, they really need to think about it. Eighth, we have verbal learners. Verbal learners like to think aloud and talk about academic material to themselves and others. Some verbal learners do not really know what they're thinking until they've actually spoken. Sharing words can help to sort out and organize ideas. Ninth, we have interactive learners. The interactive learner often enjoys working with peers, parents, or teachers. Interactive learners enjoy the company of others when acquiring knowledge and completing homework. Cooperative groups and video chatting can be very helpful for the interactive learner. Tenth, we have the indirect experience learners. The indirect experience learner enjoys vicarious experiences or demonstrations. They acquire knowledge from the shared experiences of others. The product Smart Moves offers body puzzles for the mind. They use demonstrations and it is great for the indirect experience learner. Eleventh, we have the direct experience learners. Direct experience learners should encounter educational topics in the real world. Traveling and day trips to educational places can help these learners conceptualize and understand academic lessons. On-the-job training and apprenticeships are excellent ways for direct experience learners to acquire information. Science classes often employ direct experiences when students conduct laboratory experiments. Twelfth, we have the rhythmic melodic learners. The rhythmic melodic learner thinks in rhythms or patterns. They often respond to melodies and this can assist them when memorizing material. They may walk to a beat and their memory can be assisted when learning to a beat. Some of these learners find that music can block distractions because it serves as white noise. Products like Multisensory Multiplication and Division to Melody CD enables kids to quickly learn their multiplication tables through songs and other fun activities. This is great for the rhythmic melodic learner. So how can we accommodate all learners? Great teachers often have flexible ways of learning and they are comfortable accommodating each student's unique profile. Teachers don't have to teach 12 different ways to reach all their students. Some instruction, such as skits or hands-on activities, are multi-sensory and can reach many different types of learners. It's always best for teachers to offer assignment options. To optimize learning and empower students, allow them to select from a number of choices that can illustrate mastery of the academic content. Many learning style inventories are lacking because they assess only a few learning modalities. Others push students into profiles suggesting that they are, for example, either visual or auditory learners. This is not appropriate because students may find both of these learning modalities helpful or perhaps neither of them are a true preference. It is important to consider all 12 ways of learning on a continuum. In addition, while some students may have very flexible ways of learning, others' preferences may be quite specific. Here's an example of a student's profile scores. Mary, a high school student, took the 48-item questionnaire. Then her scores were tallied as demonstrated in this video. The higher number in the final column, the greater the learning preference. In this case, Mary's best learning modalities are tactile and verbal. However, teaching methods that are multisensory will be even more appealing to Mary as scores can be added. For example, if instruction includes discussion, images, and manipulatives, Mary's learning style will clearly be honored. If you are interested in learning styles, you can purchase the Eclectic Learning Profile and Learn, How to Teach to Each of the Twelve Ways of Learning, How to Empower Students that Learn Differently from Yourself, How to Create Assignments that Honor and Empower Each Learning Style, How to Help Organize Students with Diverse Learning Profiles, How to Educate Others About the Twelve Ways of Learning, and How to Accommodate Changing Classroom Profiles. To learn more about this product and many others, 
you can go to www.goodsensorylearning.com.